anybody to ever have to go through or even imagine going through what I felt that night. That was one of the very last things the defendant said when she was on the stand. Are you kidding me? That is garbage. Most of what she said was garbage. 99% of this trial has been about the defendant. So let's take one minute, one minute to talk about that. You know, when you're done with a hard day, we've, we've all been there. And whether you eventually sit down on your couch or your favorite chair or lay down in bed, it finally hits you, right? I can breathe. You have that moment of peace, right? You've all been there. You guys have probably been there this whole trial. You get back to the hotel. That's what Bo was trying to achieve on September 6th, 2018. You know that because you look at that ottoman and you see that he's got his bowl of ice cream that he was finally going to get to enjoy. He's got his remote there. He's got his cell phone there. He's got his laptop there. And right in front of him is that TV. I don't know if Bo got to enjoy that for one second or five seconds or ten seconds, but it wasn't long because the ice cream was still frozen. When all of a sudden, this defendant busts in to his apartment, what must Bo have been thinking? He's sitting on the couch, and he acts like a normal, reasonable person. And he looks in the direction of the intruder into his home. She is an intruder into his home. He looks like a normal, reasonable person. He starts to get up like a normal, reasonable person who has somebody busting into their home. And before he can even get up, he is shot dead in his own home. By her. A guilty verdict in this case does not mean you hate police. This has got nothing to do with politics. And let me tell you something. The majority of police officers do a great job. They do a great service for us. We saw multiple police officers here that tried to save Bo's life, right? Those were good police officers. A guilty verdict is not saying you don't like police. This has nothing to do with that. This has to do with that defendant making unreasonable decisions that put her in that seat and Bo in the ground. That's what this case is about. On September 6, 2019, one year after this happened, y'all all came down to the central jury room. Remember that? You guys had to fill out that five-page questionnaire. We sent out 4,000 jury summons, and about 800 people responded. You 16 were one of those 800. From those 800, about 450 people filled out questionnaires because 350 people couldn't do it right off the bat for various reasons. After you guys left on the 6th, we all looked at those questionnaires for a week. We studied those questionnaires. We looked at every single answer. And we determined about 200 and something of y'all, not y'all, but the other people were there, couldn't serve either because you couldn't follow the law. We were at 220 people the last time I spoke to y'all on September 13th. And remember what I told you guys. I was very clear in what our intentions were. I said we were going to prove our case beyond a reasonable doubt, and I gave everybody an out at that point. If you can't do it, if you don't have the stomach for it, let me know right now. And plenty of people raised their hands. Plenty of people said they couldn't follow the law. Plenty of people couldn't do it. You 16 told me you could. You said you would follow the law. You said when we proved our case beyond a reasonable doubt, you would find her guilty. Not beyond all possible doubt, beyond all reasonable doubt. 
And you're gonna hear me say reasonable a bunch. You're gonna hear Mr. Hermas say reasonable a bunch because this case is all about what is reasonable and what is absurd. Let's talk about witness credibility. We talked about that as well, remember? We talked about the fact that this defendant was a police officer at the time of the offense. You guys all insured me, she's not gonna get a leg up about that. You're gonna treat her the same as anybody else. You insured me, each and every one of you, that you would do that. I expect you to follow through with that. You insured me if she took the stand and waived her Fifth Amendment rights, you would treat her the same as any other witness. You would judge her credibility the same as any other witness. She sat up here and told you two different stories. She couldn't even get her story straight because we go all the way through direct and we go all the way through cross and the story is, oh, yep, Bo's at the back door and he's coming at me and I had no choice. I get to 13 feet and I just shoot him as he's standing there. Then all of a sudden, on redirect, oh, no, 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 no. He was actually kind of over by the couch in that area. Because Mr. Hermes had brought up the physical evidence, which is that second shot in the wall over by the couch. She was caught in a lie. Do you know how you know Bo wasn't at the back door? Go take a look at the pictures. See if you see a little object by the back door. It's a baseball bat. You think anybody in their right mind was somebody busting through their apartment who's standing right next to a baseball bat doesn't pick it up? That baseball bat was never touched because he wasn't at the back door. There's no reason he ever would have been at the back door. He was sitting there getting ready to eat his ice cream. Imagine him going into that kitchen, grabbing that ice cream, putting it down, sitting down, and all that happened. That makes sense. That's reasonable. The physical evidence. He's laying right by the couch. He has no pockets. She says she's looking for his hands. He has no pockets. Even if he's coming towards her, his hands are going to be out. But where his hands were, were getting up off that couch. That's where they were. You guys all know that's the truth. You know it. We went through a bunch of law during jury selection. Remember I told y'all there's a scintilla of evidence that gets in the charge. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of stuff in there. There's a lot of language and a lot of stuff. And guys, it is nonsense. So I'm going to take you through why exactly all their defenses fail. Mistake of fact, all right? Here's your, your run-of-the-mill hypothetical about a mistake of fact, all right? Guy goes out hunting. He's going to hunt a deer, all right? He thinks he shoots a deer. He ends up shooting a person who's dressed as a deer. That's a mistake of fact. That's a mistake of fact. This scenario is not a mistake of fact. So we must prove to you beyond a reasonable doubt. Either number one, the defendant did not believe that she was in her apartment, entering her apartment, or that Bo was an intruder. Hey, she believes that. You can believe all kinds of crazy stuff. I can believe I'm in Florida right now. Doesn't mean I'm reasonable. So fine, just cross that out. Or the defendant's belief that she was entering her apartment was not reasonable. Because remember, it's not what the defendant thinks. Because every defendant thinks they're justified. And if every defendant comes in here, if I, if I shoot Mr. Hermes right here in the head, and I say, oh, his red tie turned into a gun, well, I guess, you know, I got to be not guilty. That's not how it works. So let's go through about why, enter, why her belief was not reasonable about entering her apartment. And you know what's beautiful about this? You know, we had all these people come down here from the South Side Flats. We had these people, that the, the lawyer said, oh, he went into the apartment on floor two and he walked in and there was a purse and a lady and all this. Who cares? Who cares? Okay, people parked on the wrong floor. People went to the wrong door. One, nobody ever shot anybody before. And two, Let's talk about Miss Rose. You want to talk about somebody in the same similar situation without, without the defendant's training. Let's talk about Miss Rose, 
who was the next door neighbor, 1380, next door to the defendant. She told you about the time she went on the fourth floor, right? She went down that hallway, she turned left, she didn't see that plant or whatever that thing is, right? The noticeable deal, the urn, the plant, whatever it is. She said, huh, that's not there anymore. Well, maybe the homeowner put it in. She walks down to her apartment. Hey, my floor mat isn't there anymore. That's strange. Maybe the apartment complex turned it, uh, took it up, right? Huh, the smell isn't right either. You know what? Maybe I'll use my eyes, look up at the apartment sign. Oh, I'm at the wrong place. Let's compare that to the trained professional over here, the defendant, who backed into a parking spot. Look at her perspective. She is looking out at the roof line. She is backed in in front of the elevator. She's looking at the roof line. She's looking at the emergency exit sign. She's looking at the elevator. And she says she's there for a couple minutes. I don't know. I don't know what to believe and what not to believe from her. Let's say it's a couple seconds. Let's say it's a couple minutes. She doesn't notice any of that. Terrific. Fine. She walks down the hall. All right, now she makes the left turn. She doesn't notice the plan at all. And then she gets to Bo's apartment. All right? Look. She is standing at Bo's door, and there are five things that she missed right there. One, the apartment number. OK? Look up a foot. Not that difficult. Can't do that? Look down at your feet. You're standing on a bright red mat. Can't do that because your eyes don't function up or down. Well, guess what? When you're putting the key in the hole, your eyes have to be looking somewhere, right? She doesn't see the red blinking light. Oh, maybe her eyes aren't working. Well, how about her ears? She doesn't hear the whirring noise of the thing turn. But now her ears aren't working. All right, what about the sensation from going to concrete to carpet? You can tell the difference. And you know how you know she can tell the difference? She said that she felt when she was standing on the threshold so she could tell the difference between metal and concrete, but not floor and concrete? That's absurd. It is absolutely absurd. Oh, and then, all right, let's open up the apartment and then get hit with this cloud of marijuana smoke so thick that Ranger Armstrong said two days later it reeked of marijuana. So her eyes aren't working, her ears aren't working, her sense of touch isn't working, her sense of smell isn't working. I mean, my God. This is crazy. It was unreasonable. She should have known she was in the apartment, in the wrong apartment. Oh, and how about everything once she gets into the apartment? Stuff missing, the ottoman, all that stuff. This is a trained professional. Think for one second. Use your brain like a normal, reasonable human being. Okay, and if you don't, if you don't want to do that, and by the way, six of you can agree on uh, on the first belief, and six of you can agree on the second, because it's ors. All right, fine. Her belief that boat was an intruder in her apartment. Yep, because most burglars, what they love to do, they they break in without using any force at all. And we'll get to that in a second. And then you know what they like to do? They like to plop down on your couch, have themselves some ice cream, smoke some weed, and watch some TV. Yeah. That sounds like a pretty dangerous person. I, I can't believe I'm even making these arguments. It's so common sense, and when you start talking about it, it sounds so absurd, all the things that she missed and all the things that she thought. And yeah, she thinks it, but she is not a reasonable person. She was not thinking like a reasonable person that day. All right, so now we get to the point where she's in the apartment. Self-defense. We talked about this as well, right? Three prongs, and she's got to hit all three, all right? Yes or no, you answer these questions. The defendant was protecting herself against Bo's use or attempted use of unlawful deadly force or to prevent the imminent commission of all these various violent felonies. Murder, aggravated sexual assault, apparently he was going to try to rape her, uh, aggravated kidnapping. I mean, there's just all this garbage in here, all right? But let's talk about this. Let's talk about Bo's attempted use or unlawful use of deadly force. <coughs> he is sitting on his couch eating ice cream. He's not going to throw the ice cream at her and kill her. He's not going to throw a spoon at her and kill her. 
He's sitting there the same as y'all are. You guys apparently are all posing deadly threats right now. So that fails. And if that one fails, the whole rest of it fails. But if somehow you think, well, eating ice cream, that seems like a deadly, uh, a deadly force to me. All right, go on to number two. There was a reasonable belief based on a reasonable person's standard, not what she thinks. That that use of deadly force was immediately necessary, not three seconds before, not three seconds later, at that instant when she shot him. It had to be done. It had to be done because Bo had the audacity to think, what is going on around here? And he tried to rise up off his couch. Well, there's no, nothing else that could have been done. Had him been shot dead right there. And I'll tell you another thing. She made that decision outside the door. She made that decision outside the door. She was going to go in commando style and just execute whatever was in there without thinking. And that's not reasonable either. She had other options. She could have retreated, and you can use that against her under certain circumstances. One being, she didn't have a right to be there. Another being, she provoked all of this. You can use that against her. Somehow you think it had to be done right then? All right, number three, proportionality, equal force. We talked about somebody slaps you in the face, you can't shoot him in the head. He's eating ice cream on his couch. So if you're sitting and eating ice cream, you get shot in the heart. Is that what we're saying? Castle Doctrine. This, I mean, in a case full of bizarre things that I have to go over that I never thought in my career I'd have to talk to you guys about with this absurdity and unreasonableness of her, Castle Doctrine. Who does Castle Doctrine protect? Homeowners. It protects homeowners against intruders, and now all of a sudden the intruder is trying to use it against the homeowner. What, what are we doing? This presumption is if the defendant knew or had reason to believe, all right, even higher than the other one, that Bo unlawfully and with force entered. Force. Where's the force? There's no broken door. There's no hinges. There's nothing like that. There's a door that's cracked open. That's not force. So if somehow you think <laughs> castle doctrine applies, there's no force. All right. Force entered or was attempting to enter unlawfully the defendant's occupied habitation. Occupied habitation, she lives alone. We talked about this. This is for the intruder barging in on Bo. <laughs> That's what this is. Intruder barges in on Bo. Bo has the right to shoot that person under Castle Doctrine. Not the other way around. There's other parts that are in there, too, about that he was trying to force her out of her apartment. Oh, and, and by the way, defendants occupy habitation. Let's not bury the lead. It's not her apartment. Let's not lose sight of that common sense. You know, sometimes when you're dealing with these absurdities and things that don't make any sense, you lose your own sense as well. Don't let that happen to you. It's not her apartment. There's no force. It's not occupied. She don't get castle dog. This law is not in place for her. It's in place for both. So here's what you're left with when you knock out all those defenses. You're left with one question. The question is this. Is it manslaughter or is it murder? That's what you've got to decide. Is it manslaughter or is it murder? Now remember, we talked about that as well. Murder does not involve premeditation. You don't have to, she didn't have to decide going in there, I'm going to kill him. There doesn't have to be any motive. There doesn't have to be any conspiracy behind it. All right? Murder is intentionally or knowingly causing a death or intending to cause serious bodily injury and committing an act thoroughly dangerous to human life. She got on the stand and told you what her intent was. Her intent was to kill. That's murder. All that stuff leading up to the door doesn't matter at the time of the shooting. All the stuff leading up to the door doesn't matter for self-defense in terms of what's immediately necessary, and it doesn't matter murder versus manslaughter. Now look, if somehow you heard the testimony different than I did, 
or you see the evidence different than I did, I, I can argue all day and I'm not going to be able to change your mind if you think that shooting somebody in the heart and getting up here and admitting that that was your intent, if you think that's a reckless shooting, I, I, can't, I can't do anything with that. All right? You use 20 minutes. Thank you, Your Honor. You understand our position. You understand that she admitted what her intent was. But I'll tell you one thing. This is not quit. It's murder versus manslaughter. And it's murder. Manslaughter might have been if that second shot that she fired through the wall hit somebody down the block walking around. Maybe that's manslaughter. Maybe. Although I'd still argue that's not clearly dangerous to human life. But you know what? Thank God that bullet didn't hit anybody as she's going in there just guns blazing. The defense is going to come up here in a few minutes. They're going to talk to y'all. And I want you to think about a few things when they talk to you guys. Every time that they mention the word mistake, I want you to think about Ms. Rose and about what is reasonable and what she did and the signs that she saw that this defendant did not see. It's, it's not a mistake. It's a series of unreasonable decisions. She did not think that night. When they talk about deadly force, and she had to use deadly force because that was what was going on in her mind. You think about Bo, about to eat some ice cream, and ask yourself, is Bo a threat? Because you know what? Nobody, nobody was going to die that night. If she had thought for one second, you know what probably would have happened? She would have walked in, she would have felt embarrassed for a second, and knowing Bo's character, he probably would have laughed it off, they would have sat down and watched TV, and Bo would have made a new friend. That's probably what would have happened. Nobody had a doubt. She caused his death. She acted unreasonably. When they talk about the defendant thinks this, the defendant thinks that, the defendant <coughs> said this, the defendant think, thought that, substitute every time out, they say the defendant or they say Amber Geiger, and put in reasonable person. I beg of you to do that. And if somebody back there in deliberations says, oh, well, the defendant said this and the defendant said that, you stop them right there and you say, no, this is about a reasonable person under the same circumstances. That is what you have to decide. When they start talking about possible, you substitute that for reasonable. You should be back there thinking about reasonable, reasonable, reasonable. This case is about accountability for unreasonable decisions. Y'all, 16, are the voice of the community. This, this cannot be allowed. This cannot be acceptable. Mm -mm. Not here in Dallas, not here in Texas, not anywhere. Your home is supposed to be your sanctuary where you feel safe. We can't have intruders busting in, killing homeowners, claiming all these defenses that were never meant for that, and walking out of here, going down the elevator with you guys when this is all done. That can't happen. There's got to be consequences for your actions. Bo is dead because of her unreasonable choices. Y'all told me you could do it. I believed you. And I tell you this with all sincerity, deep down, I, in my soul, believe that you will do the right thing. It may not be the easy thing. I believe that y'all will do the right thing, that y'all will follow your oath. You guys will follow the law, apply it to these facts, and render the only, only true verdict only just for it. And that is that this defendant murdered an innocent young man in his home.
police support. 